Welcome friends to TV Box Top, the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes and accessories. What I have for you today is a TV box from the developers of Pendu and this is the Pendu X10 Plus Amlogic S905 X3 4K TV box. This box was sent by an anonymous person and strangely enough, I can't find it anywhere to buy. So what is this mystery box from Pendu and why can't you find it? Nonetheless. Up next, I have a full review and live demonstrations and we'll see what this mystery box is all about. Stay tuned, you have that and more after the break. So I'm back and this is the box that comes in, so I'll start with a quick unboxing. In the box, you have the TV box itself, one infrared remote, one HDMI cable, a 5V 3 amps DC power adapter, and your user's manual. And now it's design and ports. The body is made of plastic with the Pendu logo printed to the top. To the rear, you have one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port. 1 audio video port, 1 IR extender port, and your DC power input. To one side, you have 1 USB 3.0 port, 1 USB 2.0, and a micro SD card reader. To the opposite side is blank. To the front, you have an LED clock display, and below the box, you have some very small ventilation holes. So it's time to set it up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm back. And this is the boot up process of the X10 Plus. You are greeted by a short animation for a few seconds, then you're taken directly to the launcher. So this is the launcher, and we have seen this launcher before with these horizontal scrolling panels where you can rearrange the icons. To the top here you have a shortcuts bar for adding shortcuts to the launcher. And below here you have your settings tab and apps tab. This launcher does not come with a navigation bar or status bar, so I will install one of my own and continue. Features of this firmware include 4K display, Dolby Vision, HDR display, HDMI CEC options, power key definition options, audio output options and digital surround sound audio options. This box has no root switch, built-in screen rotation, Samba server settings, or hardware monitor settings. In the app section, these are the apps that come pre-installed. And to complete my review, I will install a few more apps of my own and continue. So my apps are now installed, and here I installed the menu button alternative navigation bar. And for those of you who have TV boxes that are missing this bar and you are interested in seeing how to install and set up this one, I have a video tutorial in the description below this video. It's easy to set up and it's free, so check it out. And the first order of business is to check out its system and hardware information. The model of the main board used in this chipset is called the Franklin. It comes with 4GB of DDR3 RAM. 32 gigabytes of internal storage from which this is the remainder and Bluetooth 4.2 support. The CPU is the Amlogic S905X3 Cortex A55 processor clocked at 1.9 GHz configured in 32-bit mode. It only has support for 32-bit ABIs which means it can only run 32-bit applications. The GPU is the Mali G31 with a refresh rate of 60Hz and open GLES version 3.2 which is great for gaming. It has a dual band Wi-Fi support and below here it shows the 5GHz band is supported. The operating system is Android 9 Pi and the box is rooted. The box runs between 55 and 65 degrees Celsius as normal operating temperature and this is due to the tiny ventilation holes below the box. So there is a bit of overheating taking place and it will require some active cooling. 
See the link in the description for the best cooling fan recommended for TV boxes. The box comes with all the codecs needed for the playback of 4K video formats and it also includes Dolby and DTS decoders for the playback of digital audio formats. And that's it for the system and hardware information. And it's now time for some benchmarks to see how it performs and where it places on the rankings chart. First, the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speeds. The X10 Plus has a RAM copy speed of 3250 MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 124 MB per second and the write speed did not give a reading. And these are some good scores for this box. And next is the result of the Antutu benchmark and in this test, the X10 Plus got a score of 76,739. This is a very good score and we will see in a moment where it places on the chart. In the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark, the X10 Plus scored 803 single core and 2225 multi core and the box also looking good here in this test. In the Wi-Fi and the LAN speed test, I got some really good results also. The X10 Plus has the maximum bandwidth on both Wi-Fi bands and on the LAN port. And this one came as a surprise to me as I was expecting it to have lower speeds on the 2.4 GHz band and even lower speeds on the LAN port. So the X10 Plus really looking good here in this test. The final benchmark which is the graphics benchmark. The X10 Plus got a score of 5616 in the iStorm Extreme test and 523 in the Slingshot test. These are also good scores, however, this box does not have Vulcan support. And that's it for the benchmarks and let's see where it places on the chart. So the scores are in and the Pendu X10 Plus took position number 12 in reference to Antutu scores which is a good performance by this box given that it's only 3 places away from the high-end models. I have updated the format of this chart and you can now view it on my website at full spreadsheet format where you can interact with the various cells and compare scores. A link to this chart can be found in the description below this video. And that's it for the benchmarks and I now move on to the features of this box. First, this is the root state of the box. It shows that the box is rooted and this box does not have a root switch, so for those who are interested in that feature, this box may not be for you. This is the DRM information and it shows that the box only has Google Wide Vine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. So this means that Netflix and Amazon Prime Video will only show in basic quality and you cannot access movies in HD or 4K if you have a premium account. However, this does not affect apps like Kodi and streaming APKs from showing in HD or 4K. For those who like to use alternative launchers, I installed the ADW Launcher 2 and it works, with all features working. You can also use live wallpapers, but they only work with alternative launchers. Also, live wallpapers and custom wallpapers do not work with the default launcher. I performed the test for screen rotation. And I'm sorry to report that this box does not support screen rotation to portrait mode. Moving on to streaming movies and TV shows. As mentioned a while ago, Netflix and Amazon Prime Video will only play movies in basic quality due to the lack of required DRM Google Wide Vine Level 1 support with HDCP protection that protects against piracy. And for those who have basic Netflix accounts, your viewing resolution will remain the same. For those interested in the quality of YouTube, the version of YouTube that comes pre-installed on the box is the mobile version that plays up to 1080p quality. You can uninstall that version and install the Android TV version from the Aptoid App Store or any APK download available. Once installed, you can access YouTube videos in as high as 4K 2160p quality. And another quick observation with the Aptoid version is that it also triggers the HDR icon on my TV, so YouTube plays in HDR quality on this box. For those interested in casting their mobile device, the box comes pre-installed with the official version of Miracast that plays in HD quality, and here is a live demonstration.
I will now test its 4K HDR video playback capability. Only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as the ball back into the pitch and the half-time whistle had gone. The second half gets underway. I'd let it go attacking the two teams playing here in the camp. So all of the videos played ok and the box has HDR display quality. And now a test for Dolby Atmos, DTS Master HD Audio, THX and Dolby True HD Digital Surround Sound Audio formats. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object based cinematic audio with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Executioners, judges.
from this test, the Pendu X10 Plus has Dolby Atmos, DTS Master HD Audio and THX, but it doesn't have Dolby True HD. For my final demonstration, I will play some Android games and test for gamepad key mapping capability. Targets in sight! Friendly care package inbound. Games played ok, the graphics was of a high quality and gamepad key mapping apps worked ok. However, due to the tiny ventilation holes below the box it overheats, so I strongly recommend you use an active cooling fan if you intend to play Android games. If you only want to use the box for watching movies and TV shows then you don't need any active cooling. I placed a link in the description below this video where you can get one more suited for Android TV boxes. In a summary. The Pendu X10 Plus is like most good range TV boxes, it's got good Amlogic S905X3 hardware with its CPU clocked at 1.9GHz. The box is fast, it streams movies and TV shows very well. It has good Wi-Fi reception on both Wi-Fi bands and on the LAN port. YouTube plays in 4K HDR format. It plays 4K videos in HDR format and it has Dolby and DTS audio output. The areas where it fell short were the missing navigation bar and status bar, there is no root switch feature, it doesn't have screen rotation, it lacks the required DRM support for Netflix and Amazon Prime Video to play in HD and 4K quality, no Dolby True HD and the box overheats when 3D gaming. So the question